Hello and welcome to Midlife Isn't a Crisis with me, Christy Adams. I'm going to be bringing you motivation, information and we're going to have conversations about challenging age stereotypes and positivity and optimism. So whether you're looking forward to a gap year or a new career or chilling or getting over your empty nest, whatever you choose to be doing, this place is for you if you're an optimistic, positive thinker. So enjoy the show and I'll catch you again at the end. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Christy Adams here on episode six of Midlife Isn't a Crisis podcast. I'm recording this on Monday the 21st of September and we're still in 2020. And today I just want to cover something which you might think is quite funny with the podcast being called Midlife Isn't a Crisis because I want to discuss what exactly is a midlife crisis? Does it even exist? And if it does, what do you do to survive and thrive through it? So the first disclaimer is that I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist and please, 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 if you're struggling, reach out, reach out to someone. There is always someone to help. Okay. I just want to give a little bit of an intro as to what I've done this week because I've changed my morning routine. I'm now a a 5am person. I'm doing daily word counts as well on my writing, which I've always meant to do and I always tell people to do. I'm a bit slack myself, so I've started implementing those. I've done a lot less social media this week and I've definitely felt better for it. So don't worry if that's something that you feel you need to do, because it is possible. And I've been to the doctor's surgery, which was a bit of a strange environment. We're in the UK in the middle of the COVID sort of dilemmas and we're not in lockdown anymore but it's definitely wear your mask and be safe you're only allowed in groups of six things like that and the doctor's surgery was a little bit sobering a little bit of a reminder that all the media is actually there for a really good reason to keep people safe so I hope you're well and I hope your family are I hope you're looking after yourself and I just wanted to say that really it meant something So this is a bit of a history lesson and a bit of a light-hearted talk about midlife crises. So let's dive in. In the 14th century, can you believe it, Dante wrote The Divine Comedy. It's actually on my bookcase downstairs for me to read the whole thing at some point. You've probably seen films and books based on it or quoting it. You may have even read it, so congratulations if you have, because it's quite a big book. But in the 14th century, I'll read a quote from him. Midway upon the journey of our life, I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway has been lost. It was 35 when he wrote that, and people have interpreted that as his midlife dilemma. Then in the 1950s, 1960s, we got the wording midlife crisis, from a Canadian called Elliot Jack in a meeting apparently of the British Psychoanalytical Society. No doubt in a society he'll have been met with derision and applause but that was where the wording came from. So we've got Mr Elliot Jack to blame for the crisis wording and whether it's real to psychologists or not, like I say I'm not a psychologist, I do study psychology. I do feel that labels and boxes whilst they're necessary, can be quite dangerous really and quite annoying because like the age thing, you know, you're at a certain age, therefore you've got to act this way. And it drives me crazy, as you well know, that we shouldn't be put in boxes or categorised by age at all. So if you think about it, every age in your life has some sort of stereotype attached to it and some form of expected behaviours that people expect you to behave a certain way because you're a certain age. You know, when you get to be a teenage boy, it's it's man up and stop crying, which I think is ridiculous, and gradually that is breaking down. When a woman's at a certain age, she'll get the, and is it not about time you had kids, which is a horrible pressure to put on anybody, and they may or may not want them. When you get older, it's... Aren't you past that by now? Shouldn't you be more mature by your age? 
are you too old to do that so there's always an element of judgment and expectation around a certain age and because we've often been brought up with that things are changing slowly but they are changing and just know that it's okay if you feel off and if it is a midlife crisis and you want to categorize it that way that's fine but don't think that you have to conform to a specific type you don't have to go out and buy the motorbike or the flash sports car if you know if that's not what you want so i'm going to go through a few things that i feel hit you at midlife or can affect you at midlife and it might just help you a little bit in sort of assessing where you are and what you want to do with your life so all the way through this be honest with yourself it's not something that is going to be the same as everybody else you don't have to conform i'm a big sort of non-conformist i don't like conformity although i know that in society it is necessary so don't worry about that but all the way through what i'm suggesting be honest with yourself because if you're not then that's where we start getting problems so first of all it's not unique it's not scary it's okay because if dante thought about it in the 14th century we've managed to survive to this day and will survive a bit longer so don't worry about that and don't feel that you have to sit in the box that people want to put you in because you don't it might be a time in your life where for the first time you actually have time and the luxury of potentially a little bit more security to sit back and think actually is this what i want to be doing it might be that you have got children and they're getting a little bit older now and it's freeing you up to think about your future and think beyond those children. It might be that you haven't got children and you're thinking about if I leave it much longer, will I get any? Because that can be pressure where I've known people who they, they want children for what I consider almost the wrong reasons to look after them in old age. Because at midlife, you start realising that actually death does happen. You may have lost someone. You may be struggling with bereavement or you may be seeing elderly parents. It might be that you're starting to actually notice that your own health might be not as good as you would like to think it should be at that age. And you need to start sort of taking action to take care of yourself more. So it's a really good time for assessment. And I'm making it sound a bit doom and gloomy, but it certainly isn't. But I'm just explaining why you might feel a bit out of sorts and a bit bored. It might be that you're in a job where I know I was in jobs where I just wasn't appreciated. And you feel, you know, you see younger people come past you and get promoted and it's just a time where there is lots of reasons that you can feel a bit off, for want of a better word. It's hard to explain. So it's a really good time for assessment because you're not halfway through your life yet if you're in midlife or you may be just about halfway. So that means all the stuff that you've achieved and all the stuff you've done, you've got all those years ahead of you. You've got massive opportunity, but you need to start planning for it. And I think planning is something that puts you back in control. I know when I was made redundant, and this is something I've talked about frequently within my groups and my community, that redundancy is a time that often happens in midlife. And it does really knock you sideways, but it can be a massive opportunity because it can give you the boot up your bum that you need to change things. So I do believe that planning your way out of redundancy, out of midlife crisis, is a really good way to go. It might mean that you have to leave some things behind. You might be more than thrilled to leave a negative influence behind. But it might be somebody that you care for that actually you've realised that they're holding you back and they're dragging you down. Things happen, people change, times move on. And empty nests happen at this time. There are so many different changes within your relationships that you might need to make some tough decisions. And don't be worried about that if if you need to do it for your own well-being whether that be physical or mental well-being then you have to do that but get support like i say reach out if that's something that you need to do it might just literally be turning off some of your social media it might be that simple 
So look at your health. Look at how you can improve your health. It might be that you need to undertake a new exercise regime. It might be just get up earlier and eat a healthy breakfast that you've not done before. So decide to look after yourself in the next phase of your life. Don't make this a crisis. Make this a pivot point that, right, I am going to do this for the next however many years. So step up, embrace new things, mentally and physically. It doesn't all mean that you have to start running a marathon or undertaking a degree, although that's what I did. I didn't run a marathon. I've always wanted to, and one day maybe I will. I'm a bit of a challenge freak and I don't like failing. So I've never wanted to do a half a marathon. I've always wanted to do a full one. Whether I ever will or not, I doubt it very much, but it's it's out there as a possibility one day. So take action, get healthy, do it within medical guidelines. If you are considering a really big shift in physical activity, and maybe if your weight isn't ideal, then consider going to a doctor's or a medical centre and getting checked before you do it. Don't put yourself at physical harm or physical risk. But step up. It might just be doing yoga stretches in the morning. But step up. Look after your physical well-being. Look after your mental well-being. So maybe study something new. Maybe start reading more. Or as you well know, I'm a firm believer in everybody writing their story. So maybe start writing. So use your brain. Like I say, your mortality is more obvious to you now. And that is possibly why people feel that they're at a crisis point. I, Like I say, I consider it a pivot point. That you've done what you've done. You can't change what's in the past. I'm always looking forward. So try new things. If there's always something you've wanted to do, whether it be play a piano or hike for 10 miles on your own, whatever it may be. Create a plan and start moving towards it. It might be a career shift. It might be something huge. It might be a relocation. But start planning for it. It's not a problem. The reason that you're possibly bored or possibly frustrated is just because you're not achieving things that you would like to. And you may feel that you're being held back. But there's always ways around it. If you haven't got the finances right now, make a plan. And work out how you can get that, whether you need to downsize, whether you need to get a second job or take up a hustle on the side to do something. But make a positive mind shift. I think this is the main thing I want to get to, really. It's a mind shift from, oh, I've left it too late. I'm too old. Oh, life's passing me by. I'm watching all these other people succeed and I'm not. To change that mindset into a, oh, wow, I've got all this experience. This is what I can do next. Or, oh, I've never tried that before. I'm going to try this next. So try and catch yourself when you're going into a negative space and bring yourself back. And it might be just, I know these are really silly, trivial little points, but if you sat on the sofa and you're just feeling gloomy and, you know, watching TV and just feeling that, you should be doing something. Get up and do something. Even if it's late at night and you can't go out for a walk or a hike, write down what you're going to do the next day. Get out your outfit for, you know, set your alarm an hour earlier so you can go for a walk. Do something positive. But know that it's fine. If you're feeling a bit off, that's okay. It's okay to want to change things. People do. Life changes and we go on huge big diversions and pivots. And when people look back, it's like, oh, wow, I never knew you did that. Or, wow, how did you have the guts to change that? You can have the guts to change something if that's what you choose to do. So that's about it, really. Just don't worry. You can change things if you want to. It's OK if you don't feel OK. And there is a way out of it. And I know that this is an opportunity to move forward, be optimistic, look after your health and have a fantastic midlife and later on in life. Hello again, Christy Adams here, writer and coach. And I just want to say thank you to everybody involved in this show, especially you, because this is why I'm bringing it to you, to bring you value and to encourage you and motivate you. Because I know what it's like if 
there's so much pressure on we're constantly being pushed over that hill and told that we're too old and we're definitely not if you'd like the links or the show notes they're over on my website which is christyadamswriter.com so if you jump over there you'll find some other free resources my books details of my coaching because you can have one-to-one chats with me or join a coaching program with me one thing that i would really like is if you could share this podcast with someone that would be amazing someone that you feel will get value from it and will join the community so you share it with them and don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss any of the episodes and if you're feeling really generous a review on whichever system you've downloaded it from whether it's itunes or spotify a review would be fantastic because that brings me even more listeners so thank you very much for joining me don't forget midlife isn't a crisis it's our time to shine so go out there do something amazing this week and i'll catch you next time bye